Ciao, mabuhay! You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and today's Gospel teaches us how to respond to God's Kingdom. Jesus likens God's Kingdom to a wedding feast. A king sends his servants to invite people to the wedding feast of his son. Some ignored the invitation. Some even mistreated the servants. So the king said, Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The celebration began and the king met the guests. What did he find? A man not dressed in a wedding garment. The king had him thrown outside. Friends, how do we respond to God's invitation? How do we prepare for God's banquet? May we always be at our best. First reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, He will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of His people He will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that He has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The Word of the Lord He gives me repose Beside restful waters He leads me He refreshes my soul He refreshes my soul I shall live in the house of the Lord In His grace Side of all of my food. 
rose. You anoint my head with holy oil, my cup overflows, my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Second reading A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Valuing God's Invitation We continue reflecting on the parables of the kingdom as presented by St. Matthew. And today we will be treated to a feast, a banquet. But of course, there is an invitation. Now, to enter the kingdom of God, we need first to hear God's invitation. But today, let us reflect on how beautiful that invitation is so that we would be encouraged to say, yes. Oh, thank you for the invitation. Yes. In the first reading, we have a preview of the kingdom of God as a banquet in the prophet Isaiah. Try to imagine this, you know, on the holy mountain of God, God will offer a feast, a feast of uh, sumptuous food and uh, choice wines. Wow! Uh, we who come from different cultures, you, we are free to imagine what food will be present in that feast. But look, since God offers the invitation to all the peoples, all the peoples. I'm sure whatever your favorite dish is will be found there. This is part of the vision of Isaiah. 
a banquet with all peoples of the world with their uh, own traditions, languages, and cuisine will be satisfied. And the veil separating peoples from each other, preventing them from eating together, will be lifted. Yeah, imagine a banquet where you do not mingle with others. That's not a banquet, no? You eat by yourself, oh, no, that's not a banquet. Part of the banquet is you can go around, you taste other food and meet all peoples, wow. That's part of the invitation. That's part of the meal, not just the food, but the community that is formed, a global community if you want to put it that way. And this feast, according to Isaiah, is a symbol of the light and salvation that God offers to all peoples. It is not just about physical food. It is the spirit of a new humanity, of friendship, of sharing, of no one get, getting or going hungry or thirsty, but everyone enjoying the fruits of the earth because it is now laid before us by God. A beautiful invitation. But the question is, will the peoples come? Will they appreciate the invitation? This is the question. It is an invitation. It is not a coercion. In the second reading, we have one person who has accepted God's invitation, St. Paul, an invitation to be an apostle, to be a missionary. And he is very frank in his letter to the Philippians. He, as a missioner, has experienced <laughs> a variety of human conditions. By accepting God's invitation, he has experienced plenty of uh, good things. You know? He has had good food. He has had good days. But he has also experienced low moments where he had meager resources and also few friends. There were moments when he had more of persecution than that of food that nourishes one's energy, like friendship, like acceptance. But he has lived through all of that, he said. And he does not show any indication that he would say no to the invitation. Why? He says, God is my strength. God provides me the strength that I need in all of those conditions. Wow. <laughs> we see in him this this response of gratitude to an invitation. And that response makes him open to whatever consequence his yes would bring. Whether good or bad, he says yes to in the invitation, relying on God who is his strength. And look, his generous response has generated a generous response also on the part of the Philippians. They supported him in his ministry. They sent help. He who was generous in responding to God has motivated the Philippians to be generous also, to be even instruments of God's generosity to the apostle. So look, dear brothers and sisters, God invites, but if we respond lovingly and generously, we'll, we will be sending ripples to uh, other people so that they themselves would be 
encouraged to respond to God. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew Jesus began to address the chief priests and elders of the people once more using parables. The reign of God may be likened to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the wedding, but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, See, I have my dinner prepared. My bullocks and corn-fed cattle are killed. Everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went their way, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, insulted them, and killed them. At this, the king grew furious and sent his army to destroy those murderers and burn their city. Then he said to his servants, The banquet is ready, but those who were invited were unfit to come. That is why you must go out into the byroads and invite to the wedding anyone you come upon. The servants then went out into the byroads and rounded up everyone they met, bad as well as good. This filled the wedding hall with banqueters. When the king came in to meet the guests, however, he caught sight of a man not properly dressed for a wedding feast. My friend, he said, how is it you came in here not properly dressed? The man had nothing to say. The king then said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the night to wail and grind his teeth. The invited are many, the elect are few. The Gospel of the Lord. Valuing God's invitation. We are back to the Gospel of St. Matthew with a lot of parables on the kingdom of God. And this Sunday, again, the parable is directed to the chief priests and the elders. Oh, those who found some difficulty in the coming of the kingdom of God in the person of Jesus. But the parable used by Jesus uh, is very close to our human experience of a banquet and the invitation. An image which is present in the Old Testament, especially in the first reading from Isaiah today. This wonderful feast for all the peoples. So all the peoples of the world are invited and they will find their favorite dish. And this is not about food alone, but it will be also about the creation of a new humanity who will share with each other their joy. Wow, what an invitation. But will people come? Will people come? In the second reading, St. Paul tells the Philippians that he has accepted the invitation of God to be an apostle. And what a generous response he has given to God's invitation. I mean, saying yes to his mission did not bring only good experiences. There were also quite unpleasant uh, uh, results. Persecution, the loss of friends, hunger. But he continues saying yes, relying on God as his strength. And this has inspired the Philippians to also be generous. They sent help to him in his moment of need. So you see, valuing God's invitation could generate an equal generous response among other people to help others like St. Paul. In the gospel, the king sent out invitations to the wedding banquet of his son. 
So here we can already see a parallel. The king is God the Father who sends his son. No. And the image of the kingdom of God being inaugurated by Jesus, the Son of God, is like a banquet, a fulfillment of the first reading, a banquet. And you see, it is an invitation. The invited people, we can presume, are the chosen people to whom the legacy has been entrusted. The chief priests and the elders were the symbol of those who were invited. And they were supposed to be also the, the uh, uh, stewards of such invitation. But the experience of Jesus is embedded in the parable. So the king had invited people to the banquet. What was the result? No. Some just refused to come. Outright refusal. No, we will not go to the banquet. For what reason? No explanation. They just refused to go. They just did not want to go. Okay. No. Then the servants tried others. And the others just ignored the invitation and instead went about their regular business, their work, their farm. No, they did not say no, but they ignored it. They were just indifferent. They, 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 were, they, they seemed to be communicating, yes, there is this banquet, but uh, I have other things more important to deal with. Now, this banquet, well, who cares? <laughs> my farm is waiting. No, my business is waiting. So uh, those are more important things. So they don't say outrightly no, but it is in, in a very subtle way also a way of saying no, ignoring the invitation. You know? But some went beyond that. They became brutal and they did harm to the messengers. This uh, generated the ire of the king, but who would not be angry? You're already offering a banquet to you, chosen ones, you, chosen invitees. But then you refused, you ignored, and then you did harm to my messengers. God now changes course. He opened the banquet to all. He called on his messengers to invite everyone, good or bad, on the byways, the byroads, open it to everyone. This experience of rejection of the kingdom, of the invitation to those who had been invited first, led the king to open the doors to all. But hey, no, when you come, you are expected to do your share. Wear the wedding garment. Wear the virtues of those who have really accepted the invitation. You're invited to the kingdom. Then show, at least, in your clothing that you are prepared to say yes to that kingdom. My dear brothers and sisters, the first question that we ask ourselves is, are we even sensitive to the ways by which God invites us to this banquet of his kingdom? Do we pay attention? Is it paramount in our concerns? Or are we caught up in many other concerns that the kingdom of God to which we are invited occupies the lowest place? And have we reached the point where we say, no, it is not just ignoring the invitation, but refusing God's invitation. It is the most valuable invitation that we could get from God. Let us not waste it. 
the word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Friends, we continue today our reflection on Mary, our mother and teacher. This is the third installment in our series. Just like in the last episodes, the gospel would be a springboard for our reflection. Today's gospel highlights preparedness. The king had the guest thrown out of the banquet hall for coming at the feast without a wedding garment. The guest accepted the invitation but came unprepared for the celebration. What can we learn from Our Lady about preparing for the celebration of God's feast or kingdom? We can pick up three ways. Make it real in our actions. Invite others to take part in it too. And don't go home early. Huh? Don't go home early. So the first way is making the kingdom palpable through our actions. Mary, after receiving the angelic proclamation that she would be mother of God, traveled to a town in Judah where Zechariah and Elizabeth lived. We know that the couple were advanced in age, but that time they were expecting a child, John the Baptist. So by visiting them and staying with them, Mary was making real God's kingdom where the good news is proclaimed to the poor. What did Elizabeth say? <music> Friends, we will understand Elizabeth's joy and the importance of Mary's visit only if we remember that during their time, a woman's infertility was regarded as a disgrace and caused marginalization. So when Mary visited carrying the word God himself in her womb, it's as if life has come full circle for Elizabeth. The Lord who took away her disgrace, who restored her dignity, visited her. That's good news. Through Mary's visitation, God's kingdom became more real to Elizabeth. The second way is this, inviting others to participate. Mary, after making known to Jesus the need for wine at the wedding in Cana, said to the servers, Mary invited the servers to listen to Jesus and do whatever he would tell them. That's an important part of her statement. It is her way of telling them, believe in him, follow him. And by believing and following what Jesus said, the servers participated in what would be the beginning of Jesus' signs. Now lastly, do not go home early. After all the homemaking, all the traveling, all the preaching, and the painful walk to Calvary, Mary stayed. She stood at the foot of the cross, and there she received another Annunciation. The Word, God Himself, whose mother she is, now made her mother of His beloved disciples. You might ask, why single out the beloved disciple? Saint John Paul II taught us that we can consider this as a way of the Lord, of pointing out Mary's intense personal relationship with individual Christians. To each of us then, Mary became and is a mother, thanks to Jesus. And many thanks as well to Our Lady who stayed until the end. So three things we learn from Mary. Let God's kingdom be real to others through our actions. 
invite others to participate in God's feast by pointing them to Jesus and stay because there will be a new mission for each of us. This is how Our Lady prepared for the reign of God. Mary, our mother and teacher, pray for us. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, what attitudes or mental conditioning make us ignore God's invitation to be with Him? Anong mga kaisipan at mga kondisyon ng pag-iisip na umuwi sa pagbabaliwala sa imbitasyon ng Diyos na Siya ay makapiling natin? The second point is, how can we guide our youth to appreciate God's invitation? Paano natin magagabayan ang mga kabataan para pahalagahan ang paanyaya ng Diyos? Heavenly Father, you have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed. Sing hop, sing hop, na bar.